measured out the universe and you made me echoes of the voice that called the worlds to be reached throughout the ages and now speak to me you're my creator Happy Valentine's Day. May you know how much you are loved by our Lord and by each of us here at the United Methodist Church of Evergreen. You are valued. You are important. I'm the Reverend Deb Olenek, and it's good to be with you in worship today. I'm going to be starting a new sermon series entitled Satisfying Our Soul's Search for More. And our, my message today is Priming the Pump. As I move on to a few announcements, Lent begins on Ash Wednesday. Now, um, you should pull out though your Mardi Gras beads and maybe have some pancakes or uh, donuts on Shrove Tuesday before that. On Ash Wednesday, we are going to have a drive-through imposition of ashes from 12 to 12.45 right outside our main doors. You can stay in your cars. Please do wear a mask. We have our Lenten daily devotionals available. We also have our new upper room devotionals available. They're here at the church, or we'd be glad to mail them to you. If you are willing to be part of our virtual choir, which will be producing some music for Palm Sunday and Easter, I'd like to invite you to consider this. Just contact Nathan. You'll be uh, hearing a singer in your ear, and then you're just recording your voice along with the singer. And then Nathan will put it all together for us. I want to continue to thank you for the way that you've supported our ministries. You've been giving faithfully through all this time. We've been doing ministry in a new and unique way. That being said, I am just looking forward to when in the next few months I'll be able to see more and more of you in person. And now let us join in singing, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Oh.
Please join with me in prayer. God of love, whose love best was illustrated in the way Jesus of Nazareth loved you and those with whom he shared life, we pause in your loving presence to reaffirm that you are our God and we are your people and to reassess our lives in the light of your love. Thank you for caring for and about us. Forgive us for the times when we have failed to love you and others as we know we should. On this day associated with love, make us better at loving you and one another. Help us to notice, help us to care, help us to be available to those in need. For in loving others, we love you. In serving others, we serve you. And in being in ministry individually and together, we find our lives strengthened and enriched. We lift up in our hearts your beloved ones, individuals in situations around us, near and far, which need your presence, your power, your healing, and your love. As we join in the prayer our Lord taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Change my heart, O God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O God, may I be like you. You are the bottom, I am the Our Old Testament lesson comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 16. We're looking at verses 8 through 11 and 27 through 29. Hear these words. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, I may speak with bravest fire and have the gift to all inspire and have not love. My words are vain as sounding brass and hopeless gain. Oh, 
We have two gospel readings this morning. The first comes from Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 to 46. Hear these words. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. And now we'll go on to our reading from John chapter 4, verses 10 to 14. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It was high noon and hot. The Samaritan woman had given Jesus a drink of water, and now he was offering her living water, a chance to cleanse herself from her past, a chance for her to revive things that she had long thought dead, a chance to begin life anew. When we study this passage of scripture, we often look at it from the perspective of how Jesus is um, crossing racial boundaries as well as gender boundaries in his interaction with the woman, and that is certainly so, but there's also more in this passage. Jesus is meeting the woman right where she is. In fact, he goes out of his way to interact with her and to offer her this living water. Getting water that day wasn't the only thirst in her life. She was looking for someone who would just accept her and wouldn't judge her. She was looking for someone who could look beyond those things in her past she was ashamed of and see the woman that she knew she could be. 
We've all been there. We've been created with a thirst to be more than we are and more than the world thinks we are. We're created to live a life full of meaning and purpose. But some of us have become complacent, even bored, with living lives that glorify God. There might be some of us who haven't honestly accepted that living life with God can be more satisfying than without God. And then there are some of us, like the Samaritan woman, who at this point in our lives truly understand what it is to thirst for something more. Remember when we were able to go to a restaurant and have a relaxing meal? For most of us, it's been almost a year. Unbelievable. Uh, when you're in a restaurant, a waiter or waitress will gladly bring you a glass of water. Now, there are other options on the menu to quench your thirst. Uh, coffee, juice, iced tea, lemonade, pop, beer, wine. Yet you know, you know that for your body's sake, water would be the best thing for it. We know that when the body gets water, it um, in hydrating itself, it cleanses junk out of our body. It allows the different parts to function better together. It delivers essential nutrients. But you know how it is. Sometimes we see that glass of water and we think, oh, that's rather ordinary. I'd really like to have something more tasting and appealing. And so we try to satisfy our thirst with the other beverages, which we enjoy. But if we are truly thirsty, there is nothing like a glass of water that would be able to satisfy our thirst. Now, this doesn't just apply to what we drink. It applies to life also. Ever been there? That's where this sermon series, Satisfying Our Souls Search for More, comes from. There was a four-year-old girl who sat down to eat her lunch. Her mom had made her a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and also had a glass of milk with it. But the little girl left the table without eating anything. A while later, she came to her mom, said she had a stomach ache. She wasn't feeling good. And her mother said, honey, I have a feeling your stomach aches because it's empty. You need to put something in it. If you eat your lunch, I think you will feel better. The little girl did, and she felt better. About that time, their minister had stopped by the house. Uh, she was needing to talk over some business with the mother. And as they're talking, the mother notices that her pastor is rubbing her forehead with her hands, and she asks about it. And pastor says, oh my gosh, I have had this headache all morning. Well, the little girl looked over and remarked, well, that's because it's empty and you need to put something in it. Well, be that as it may, pain can come in the form of different kinds of emptiness in our lives, the emptiness in our stomach or emptiness in our head or that emptiness in our souls or our hearts. Now, maybe we've developed a uh, been there, done that mentality about this, or maybe we've told ourselves that this is as good as things can get and just deal with it. Or maybe we've allowed ourselves to become overburdened. We hang on to that false idea that our happiness entirely depends on us. It is just according to our own efforts, what will happen and what we will accomplish. Well, that moves us on to those two parables Jesus told, short one-line parables, two-line parables, about the man who found a treasure in the field and the merchant who found a great pearl. So we noticed that the man had was um, searching in the field or in the field, we don't know why, found this treasure buried it, and then sold all he had to get it. 
And then for the merchant looking for the right pearl and he comes upon it, this beautiful, unique pearl, and he sells all he has to have that pearl. And we are told that these represent what the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is like. And we need to pay attention also that these are two men who were intentionally seeking, intentionally searching for something. Satisfying our soul's thirst for more and discovering the treasure of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God go hand in hand. And in the messages of this series, we are going to strengthen our relationship with God. We are going to get a deeper understanding of ourselves and our place in the kingdom of God. We'll look at our commitment and we will apply concepts from scripture as we seek to quench our thirst. And looking at that passage from First Chronicles, which is a song ascribed to King David, we hear in this song that we are to uh, give thanks for all that the Lord has done. And we are to praise his name and tell others about this. And we are to look for and continue to seek for God. You know, seeking for God comes in our scripture over and over again. What about you? Are you actively seeking for God? When you have important decisions to make, do you consciously pause and have conversation with God about this? Or when your life, something is going on that's confusing, do you consciously pause and try to see what our Lord has to say to bring you clarity? Now, this is where abundant life is found. This is what is needed to get the living water that Jesus talked about. It's likely that we're going to need to prime the pump of our life to get this water flowing. A lot of you have probably had experience with a hand water pump, maybe in your homes or farms in later years or at your grandparents' place, maybe at a cabin or at a campground. And you know you have to push the lever up and down to get that water flowing. Now today, most of these already have this priming done for them. They're self-priming. But if you didn't, if you had to prime this hand pump, what you had to do is pour some water down it to break through the air bubble vacuum. And once you broke through that air bubble vacuum with what you poured in, then the water would come up. And this pouring of the water to priming the pump is like us actively seeking God, us actively surrendering to God. Now, perhaps it flowed at one time, but perhaps we're no longer doing that seeking and that surrendering. And it's time to prime that pump again. A woman got a job at a cloth mill. And on her first day, the supervisor told her the most important thing you need to remember is if the threads start to tangle, come and get me. He also pointed to a sign right above her that said, if your threads start to tangle, go get the supervisor. So the woman begins to weave and after a while, her threads begin to tangle. And she thinks to herself, I'm, I'm not going to get the supervisor. I'm not going to bother him. I'm going to do it myself. Well, the threads keep getting tangled. She ends up with quite a mess. The supervisor, as he comes by, see what is going on. He goes over to her and he says, why didn't you do what we told you to do? Why didn't you call on me when your threads got tangled? And she said, I wanted to do it myself. I wanted to show you the best I could do. And the supervisor said, no, you didn't, because if you wanted to show me the best you could do, you would have come and got me. Now, this happens a lot in life. Folks are doing the best they can, but life can still get all tangled up. 
What we need to do, what all of us need to do, is to call on the one who made our life, the one who made our thread, the one who knows how to untangle it, put it back together, and something beautiful. Now, the life God has for us is a lot like that glass of water that we talked about earlier. But to get to it, we need to seek God and surrender to God. And we need to do that often to keep that water flowing in our lives. God takes all those threads that we've maybe gotten tangled up and God weaves it into a beautiful tapestry we could only imagine. Let us pray. Lord, as we move through this journey in the coming weeks, help us to recognize our soul's thirst for you. Help us to surrender to you and to seek for your living water. Maybe we've never consciously done this before. Maybe it's been a while since we have looked at how hydrated we are with your spirit and presence in our lives. Wherever we are, Lord, we humbly come before you, thanking you for the life you have given us and seeking to welcome your power and strength into our lives anew. Amen. The worries of my day To quiet down my busy mind And find a hiding place Worthy You are worthy I open up my heart and let my spirit worship yours Open up my mouth and let a song of praise come forth Worthy You are worthy Of a childlike faith and of my honest praise And of my unashamed love Down my busy mind and find a hiding place. Worthy, you are worthy. I open up my.
my heart and let my spirit worship yours I open up my mouth and let a song of praise come forth Word. 